Ba -ba -da -ba -ba. All right, let's get this party moving along. So let's do the... I'll get to this in a second, but let's do the Skadoosh Pyro Helpers um, breakdown. So what I'll do is, and don't worry about this, I'll just copy this here. And I will use this core. So I'm using this as a test. So out test single, and I'm just using it from this core. And I'm, I'm do I was doing this to, you'll see why. Because if we go inside and I remove everything but the test, like so, bam, bam, everything is gone. We only have that test, and now it's quite fast to iterate, right? So it's a good looking explosion. Uh, it, it, it looks horrible, don't get me wrong. So it looks horrible, but it has good foundation. It Like the blast is good, it goes up, it's getting some uh, nice buoyancy and swirliness. But it needs, what it needs is, it needs some <laughs> skadoosh, skadoosh improvements. So this is just a basic emitter, nothing special about it, so I won't go through it. But let's do, let's talk about the skadoosh. I think there's a slight bug somewhere, so maybe hopefully we won't encounter them but by the time you guys get the tools it should be uh, bug free but it's just because we're iterating and doing so many versions and uh, adding because corbin is adding so many features uh, sometimes you get you know you get some bugs so skadoosh pyro helpers we're gonna do wind first so let's start enable wind bam so it might look weird at the beginning uh almost like we that we applied some drag to it um on and off Right, and that is because we there's a bunch of different modes that the wind comes with, and the default is set to pull. You know we can pull it faster, um, and then add this to a higher thing. In some cases, you might need this. Um, I'm yet to find it. I usually put this to add. That's how wind usually behaves and feels the most natural to me. So right now it's way too much because, and also because our emitter is still emitting, right? So if if our emitter would only be so let's go to density and let's animate our density so to here put this to four and then uh, zero so we have no density bam now it's going to look fine we can honestly test with this and then come back to density if we need it but yeah it's still it's still quite a lot you know and it's quite linear everything is kind of blowing uh, in that direction. I usually put this a bit higher up, so it goes in one direction, but also up just a tiny bit. But it's quite a lot. So under post-process, I would put this to post-multiply, and now it's going to feel like a small, gentle breeze. Yay. But everything is kind of moving in a linear fashion, so what you can do is, let's put this frequency on the turbulence lower, and let's let's blast it, just so we can see what we're working with. I'll get that. I'm that was a bit too much blasting. But yeah, it feels okay, but I mean, it doesn't feel good. What it's doing right now, it's adding. So we have our wind direction. We have our uh, vector direction and vector amplitude that we're pushing everything. And then we're just adding gas turbulence on top. And this was always finicky. You can get it to look okay, but you have to be really careful with the values. Maybe you do... Uh, a range clamp so you clamp so uh, your turbulence is not going into any negative values now all of this can help uh, we also have a remap here I'll show you that in a second but yeah you can clamp so we don't have negative let's see if we go a bit higher now so it's gonna start looking a bit more natural but still not quite I want it but Corbin actually implemented this very cool thing the speed and the direction influence and these two things are kind of the key here. So I'll visualize, I'll visualize this and I'll blast it back and I'll remove the clamp just for now. So this is way too high. So I'm going to go lower. Let's make this, let's make the patches a bit more obvious. So our turbulence patches, and you can see it's also sliding. I'm gonna put this lower. The turbulence is kind of sliding with our explosion now. Right, and that is because of this pulse slide. If we put this lower, it's now gonna stick more in that direction instead of sliding width. And then also uh, the pulse frequency, I usually pull that down. So it's still kind of uh, pulsing around, but not so much. Maybe let's 
uh, not the frequency, let's put this a bit higher so we can see the values. And now what it's doing, if we go under visualizers and do the stream, streamer length, it's still adding that additional velocity that's coming from the turbulence, but I only want this to affect the speed. So now we can pull down the direction and only keep the speed. So I'll put this to 0 0.1. And now what this is going to be doing, instead of turbulent, turbulence, turbulenting everything around, it will only be changing the speed of our, our, our basic wind speed. So some patches like here where it's uh, red is going to be more intense to where it's yeah, more blue or violet. So now we can go under remap and we can remap this so it's even more apparent. So okay, now it's going to be very apparent, hopefully. So maybe put this to one. So you can see this area has no turbulence because there is nothing, because we're multiplying the direction by all of these patches. So this is an extreme example, but that's kind of like what you would expect in with wind, right? So you want this, you essentially want these bigger patches. Okay, that's a bit, bit too much. Bigger patches of wind, it's going to one direction, but it's kind of going through that turbulent patch. So in some areas, it's going to be more intense than others. So I was really, really happy with this. It's still too much now, so you just have to multiply everything down and we're going to get a nice turbulence. So the visualizer is it's kind of essential to get that working correctly. All right, so now it's going to feel like a more organic turbulence, also like flowing through some patches. So you see like stuff like this, uh, some, okay, this one is maybe a bit too much. So uh, let's put the remap down. But yeah, in some cases, uh, you're going to get like, so if we let this sim longer, the goal with this is that it goes up, but then some areas don't go as much to the right, right? <laughs> yes. So that's one thing. And then the other, uh, so that's wind, that's wind in a nutshell. So direction and speed influence. I think that's a big one. We can also mask this by our mask fields. So let's say we add position. That would be kind of the most common. And let's do 5 and 25. I think 25 would be roughly here. So this would create a mask. All of our masks in the Skadoosh, once you start enabling them, enabling them, will go under mask. So this is the this is the master mask that you uh, should use. So under control field, we just create another control field, put this to one, and maybe increase I'll just blast it now so we can see it better. But now our wind is going to be masked by that mask as well. Never overdo wind. It can look quite fake. So I think I just like having a slight breeze with some turbulence on top. Uh, that's my preferred way of doing it. And then maybe some directional, maybe like 2.5, but mostly speed speed influence and the pulsing. So um, I'm not sure I was super clear on the pulsing. You can also see now in the mask how that, um, how our mask here is being reflected. So you can see if we increase this, how it's going to be multiplying. So the pulse slide, if we put this to 10, now our turbulence is going to be sliding in that direction. Like the patches are going to be sliding in the direction that we set here, which is also quite cool. Uh, up to you. How do you want to set that up? Okay, that's all about wind. Let me know how it feels to you guys, but I think it's pretty awesome.